about them. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, neighbor, you look good. You look good. Amen. The sermon is don't worry about them. All right. We take so much time of our days, so much time in our lives worrying about people who are doing dirt. Say it, Pastor. Worrying about people who are doing wrong, worrying about people who are doing better than us, although they're doing it in the wrong way. What I am saying, I am saying that we need to quit looking at everyone else and focus on bettering our own situation. Say it, say it, say it. We need to, uh, as a body of Christ, we need to focus on what's important and not worry about the person doing wrong and seem to prosper. We need to understand that just because someone has material wealth, it doesn't mean that they are prospering. Amen. When we truly prosper, we understand that we have better relationships with our mothers, with our fathers, and with our brothers and sisters in Christ. We understand that there is a blessing in breathing. Amen, somebody. And that is prospering. I remember growing up in, in the small town of Detroit. Amen, somebody. It's a little bitty town of Detroit. I say it's little because as big as it is, you always know somebody who knows somebody else. Amen. I used to look at the drug dealers and I would see the, the cars they would drive and I'd be like, dang, how can I be down? How can I be down? And then I thought uh, if I did what they did, I'd be all right. Now, I never sold drugs, amen, just so you know. But at a time, I was envious of the material things that they had. Now, when I go back to Detroit today, I see those same guys living in their mother's basements. Those same guys standing on the corner trying to still sell something, have not come up, they have not prospered. I see those same guys dead in the grave. Amen, somebody. Those same guys in jail. Those who thought they were prospering while they did wrong. Amen. Uh, this brings us to our scripture. Uh, this psalm was written by King David. King David was an expert on evil doers and those who seem to prosper by doing the wrong thing. King David had been on the receiving end of evil and he had been on the giving side of evil as well. On the giving side, he killed a man to take his wife and thought that having her would make him prosper. But ultimately, that was not the case. David was rewarded with some harsh times for his act. Now, King David was also the receiver of evil acts. His own son tried to remove him from the throne because he thought that the way to prosper uh, was to take what his father had. And ultimately, at the end of the day, his evil acts were repaid with death. The Lord placed this scripture on my heart because in the times we live in, people will try to cut corners by doing the wrong thing to try and get ahead. Uh, I want you to know, I want you to understand that at the end of the day, evil will be rewarded with hard times and some rough lessons. I know that there's someone in the building who needs to hear this on today. Our scripture tells us, it says, fret not. Uh, when the scripture tells us to fret not, it says, you don't have to worry because those who prosper in the wrong manner will lose in the long run. Yeah. And their reward will only be here on earth. See, a person can enjoy the finer things here on earth, on earth, but if they don't get right and get it together, they'll forever be lost. Yeah. Withering like the grass. Yeah. Now, not many of you in the room know about grass, but I do. Uh, I'm from the trash. We cut a whole bunch of grass. Right. I used to want to burn it up when I was little. I want to throw pesticides on it or something just so it turned brown so I didn't have to cut it. Now, you all out here don't really know about grass because you got rocks everywhere. Amen. And I thank God for rocks. But my kids and my family, they want grass in the backyard. But I'm not watering it. Amen, somebody. Uh, 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 I'm not watering it. I'm telling you right now. Uh, uh, back to my point, though. Uh, when grass is cut down, it withers away. It's no longer tied into the source. It's no longer prospering. It's no longer growing uh, and being protected or being anchored. We are anchored in the Lord when we look to him. Amen. 
instead of looking to evil in those who do evil. The scripture tells us to trust in the what? Lord. When the scripture tells us to trust in the Lord, it doesn't mean for some things uh, at some times. It means for all things at all times. Some of us trust God for finances, but we don't trust him for the healing that we need. Some of us trust him for healing, but we don't trust him for the protection that he provides. Right. Now, I could go on and on about our lack of trust. But we have to focus on eternal blessings that come with our service to the Lord. We ought to trust in the Lord. Yes. You all know Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, don't you? It says, trust in the Lord with all what? Thine heart. Lean out into thine own what? Understanding in all thy what? Ways. Acknowledge him and he shall what? Direct thy hand. When Solomon wrote that text, uh, and by the way, that's King David's son. When he wrote that text, he was pointing to the fact that when we trust in God, when we walk in his ways, we will be okay. Stop worrying about what you don't have. Stop worrying about what you used to have. Stop worrying about what they have and look at yourself. It says, delight thyself in the Lord. When we look at delight, uh, it should come from knowing that God will never leave me or forsake me. It should come from he hasn't brought me this far to leave me. It should come from uh, uh, when we delight ourselves in the Lord that uh, he is a very present help in times of trouble. Uh, we know the Bible is true when it says that I can do all things through Jesus Christ. We know the Bible is true when it says that the prayers of the righteous availeth much. We may be bent on today, but guess what? You'll never be broken. You might be strained on today, but guess what? You'll never be stressed. When we look at the man that we can't see instead of the one we can. It says, commit thy way unto the Lord. Everybody say amen. Amen. Because some of y'all ain't said nothing. Amen. amen. I'm up here sweating. Y'all still ain't said amen. <laughs> As we commit our ways, we will present our bodies. A living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is our what? Reasonable service. That's in Romans 12, 1. Paul said that a commitment is when we stop focusing on the wants and thank God for the needs being provided. Paul was saying you just can't do what you want to do just because you can do it. We understand, recognize, and realize that God is the head of our lives. Amen, somebody. And not just a last resort when we have problems. Some put God on the shelves when they uh, get what they want and they need. But then they pick them back up again when they have lost all that they had. In a committed relationship, you communicate with the other person all the time. And we need to be the same way when we commit our ways to the Lord. Don't just talk to him when you need something. Amen, somebody. I know we go crying when we need something, but when we're okay, we don't say a word. Because we think we're all that. You ain't all that. I ain't all that. Amen. Tell the truth about it. Uh, when we don't fret, when we trust in the Lord, we delight ourselves in the Lord, we shall be a reflection of Isaiah, the 40th chapter, the third verse. It says, but those who wait, you know this, on the Lord, shall renew their what? Strength. They shall mount up with wings like what? Eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. We have to do right even when doing wrong is easy. We have to do right even when doing wrong is popular. We have to do right even when our families and loved ones are being examples of the wrong things. We have to do right even when people pick you up to ride shotgun with them when they're doing wrong. Amen, somebody. Amen. We need to do right. I need you to understand. I need us to understand. I need me to understand that the wicked, those who do evil, those who do dirt, can't and uh, shall not always prosper. Amen. Our scripture tells us that uh, you need to know that God's word is true. When we live like the Lord, uh, loving others, being kind, encouraging instead of hating. Amen, somebody. Uh, uh, there's a saying that says, you ain't about that life. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> amen, amen, amen. You ain't about that life. Uh, that saying is a reflection of what we should be actually. 
We shouldn't be like that life of the world. Amen. Yes. We should be like the life of Christ. Yes. Helping instead of hurting. Amen, somebody. Yes. Building instead of tearing down. We ought to look like the master. We ought to walk like the Messiah. Yes. We need to be a reflection of Jesus. Yes. When people see us, they should be happy instead of running the other way. Yes. Sometimes we wonder why people don't talk to us or hang around. It might be because... You're always fretting and fearing. You always having a pity party. It might be because you don't trust God for what you need. It might be because you are delighting yourself in the Lord. It might be because you are truly committed to Jesus Christ. The greatest commitment we could have is the commitment to Jesus Christ. Someone may ask, well, uh, what am or uh, why are you committed to? To Christ instead of cash, cars, and clothes. You should be able to boldly say, One day when I was lost, Jesus Christ died for me. Yes. You should be able to boldly say, He died and suffered for me. And the least I can do is serve Him. Yes. They might ask, Well, how did He die? And you can tell them between two thieves who thought it was prosperous to do evil and gain by being wicked. You can tell them that he was beat so I could be more than a conqueror. Amen. He was bruised so I could have the whole armor of God. He was belittled so I could stand on a solid foundation. And after that, he was hung on a cross with nails in his hands so I could have eternal prosperity. And then you can tell them that that isn't the end of the story. Let them know that it might sound bad, but guess what? It's truly a blessing because the story didn't end there. Let me tell you that Jesus was placed in a borrowed tomb. Amen, somebody. He was there as a permanent visitor. He was not a permanent visitor, but he was a temporary guest. And after the wicked thought they had prospered, amen, somebody, uh, and the evil thought they had won. Jesus got up, guess where? Out of the grave, defeated the enemy, and rose with all power. All power. Not some power. All it power. Somebody, not a piece of power. All power. Somebody, not half power, but he rose with all power in his hands. Those who were evil uh, didn't prosper because Jesus came on the scene. Jesus came on the scene. He set things right, letting the world know that the wicked won't prosper. And that wrong will never be right. Amen. Brother David, King David, knew what was right when he penned these words. Do not fret because of evil doers, nor be envious of the workers of iniquity. For they shall be cut down like the grass, and wither as the green herb. Trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and feed on his Faithfulness, delight yourself in the Lord, and he shall give you the desires of your heart. Commit your way to the Lord. Trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. He'll bring the depression to pass. Amen, somebody. He'll bring the problems to pass. Amen, somebody else. He'll bring whatever you're facing to pass. All you got to do is trust in him. All you have to do is lean on him. All you need to do is depend on him. Whatever you might need because he's to do anything but fail. Trust him for the healing. Trust him for the deliverance. Trust him for the peace. You are the tribe in the Lord. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. Somebody say thank you. Somebody say glory to God. You are the tribe in the Lord. All days have Sunday. You are the tribe in the Lord. Monday through Sunday. Not just for the life of Yourself. It's an old saying that said, Don't watch me, watch the weather. Amen, somebody. Stop watching people. Watch me. Stop watching people. 
keep your eyes on the Lord. 